The Punic Wars were a monumental series of battles between the Romans and the Carthaginians that took place in the 3rd and 2nd centuries BCE. The First Punic War, which lasted from 264 BCE to 241 BCE, is considered to be the longest and most severely contested war in history. The Second Punic War began in 218 BCE with the crossing of the Alps by the Carthaginian general Hannibal and his army in order to attack Italy. The Battle of Metaurus was one of the most pivotal battles of that war, taking place in 207 BCE near the Metauro River in Italy. The First Punic War had been won by the Romans, who subsequently imposed heavy burdens upon the conquered Carthaginians. In order to pay the tribute that the Romans put upon them, the Carthaginians had to tax their Spanish colonies. The greatest Carthaginian general at the time was Hamilcar Barca, and he was sent to Spain to quell the unrest that was created. He took his adult sons, Hannibal and Hasdrubal, along with his older son-in-law, Hasdrubal the Fair, with him. When Hamilcar was killed at the Battle of Heliche in 228 BCE, Hasdrubal the Fair replaced him as commander of the Carthaginian army. Hasdrubal the Fair managed to keep peaceful relations with the Romans until his assassination in 221 BCE. Prior to his death, seven years earlier, Hannibal's father had made him vow to a hatred of the Romans for life. As a result, the new Carthaginian general rejected the conciliatory attitude of his predecessor. He also stopped the payment of the annual Roman tribute. Hannibal was looking for an opportunity to take on the Romans, and it came when they installed an anti-Carthaginian army at Saguntum in Spain. He marched his army into the city and took possession of it as a liberator from Roman oppressive rule. In doing so, he struck the first blow of the Second Punic War. Hannibal was not one to wait for the Romans to attack him. Instead, he led his army of between 40 and 50,000 men and a herd of war elephants over the Alps in what has been recognized as one of the greatest military feats in all of human history. Nearly half of his force died along the way. Still, he had enough of an army remaining to win a series of victories in Italy. While Hannibal was conquering in Italy, his brother Hasdrubal remained in Spain to command the forces that were fighting the Romans there. His opposing general was Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio, who managed to best Hasdrubal in a series of encounters. Then, with a greatly reinforced army, Hasdrubal managed to defeat the Roman army in the Battle of the Upper Baetis. Scipio and his brother were both killed in the battle. This brought two new generals to the Spanish theater, Gaius Claudius Nero and Scipio Africanus. Scipio began his Spanish campaign with the victory at New Carthage. Meanwhile, Nero managed to corner Hasdrubal at Blackstone Pass. The Carthaginian general feigned surrender and requested time to work out the terms. Each night, however, he managed to send portions of his force out of the pass and away to safety. Finally, under cover of fog, Hasdrubal led the remnant of his force out of the pass. A humiliated Nero was returned to Rome after this embarrassment. Scipio now had overall command of the Roman forces in Spain. In 208 BCE, Scipio's army attacked the Carthaginians under Hadrubal at Baecula. It was another stunning victory for Scipio, with a large portion of the Carthaginian army being destroyed. In the wake of this defeat, Hasdrubal led the remnant of his army across the Alps to join forces with his brother in Italy. The plan was for the unified army to march on Rome. After making the monumental journey across the Alps, Hasdrubal diverted from his mission to unite with Hannibal to lay siege to the colony of Placentia. The problem was that his army had no siege equipment. As a result, the residents of Placentia were able to see out the siege. This failed attack lost valuable time. Hannibal was then being pressed hard by Claudius Nero, who had been reassigned to the Italian theater. Hasdrubal continued on his quest to join forces with his brother. Standing in his way, however, was the Roman force under the command of Marcus Livius Salinator and Lucius Porcius Licinius. The two armies approached each other near the Metauro River. The forces were evenly matched and they spent a few days sizing each other up. Meanwhile, Nero, who was pursuing Hannibal, had intercepted messages between the Carthaginian brothers 
and discovered the whereabouts of Hasdrubal and the size of his army, Nero decided on the spot to turn his army and fast march them to fortify the army that was facing Hasdrubal. He figured that with his extra 6,000 legionnaires and 1,000 cavalry, the forces of Salonator and Licinius could crush Hadrubal. Then they could concentrate their entire force on Hannibal. When Nero's forces arrived, he integrated them with the existing army as discreetly as possible, so that Hasdrubal, who was camped just a mile and a half away, would not notice the additional troops. The following morning, Hasdrubal began to prepare his army to take the offensive, but then he noticed that the enemy camp contained shields that were different to those seen the previous day. He sent scouts to reconnoiter the Roman camp. When they returned, the scouts reported that two trumpet blasts had sounded in the consul's camp. This was a sure sign that there were now two consuls present in the camp. From this, Hasdrubal deduced that the Roman forces had been significantly strengthened overnight. This caused him to change his plan. Rather than attacking, he waited out the day and then led his army back toward the Mataro River. In the darkness, the army got lost, and when daylight arrived, they were strung out along the banks of the river in a rather disorganized manner. Back in the Roman camp, Nero decided to take advantage of the disorganization of his enemy and launch an immediate strike. When his scouts reported that the Romans were approaching, Hasdrubal organized his defenses. His forces were made up of his Carthaginian cavalry, Gauls, Ligurians and Spaniards. The Gauls were placed on a hill to the left, with the Spaniards and Ligurians in the center and the cavalry on the right. The ten remaining elephants that Hasdrubal had brought over the Alps were used to bolster his center position. The Romans approached with Nero's newly arrived army on the right, Salinator's forces in the center, and Licinius on the left. Salinator's centurions immediately targeted the enemy's elephants. They had learned from experience that once wounded, the elephants would turn on their masters. The Roman spears worked and the huge beasts began to stampede through the Ligurian defenders. This allowed the Romans to follow through and decimate the Carthaginian center with tens of thousands of men being slaughtered. On the right side, Nero's army was unable to dislodge the Gauls. Rather than allowing his army to get bogged down, he ordered them to dislodge from engaging the Gauls and to reinforce the assault on the Carthaginian cavalry on the left. This move proved decisive, crushing the Carthaginians. Thousands of desperate Carthaginians tried to escape across the Mataro River, but were either drowned or filled with arrows before they could get across. Realizing that all was lost, Hasdrubal, with his sword held aloft, galloped into the midst of the enemy. He was quickly cut down, but by now the battle had devolved into a massacre, with the river Mataro flowing red with the blood of the Carthaginians. Nero followed up his victory by marching his army straight back to Brutium to finish off Hannibal. For his part, Hannibal didn't even know that Nero had departed. The first he learned of the disaster at the Mataro River was when a party of Romans rode up and threw a round object into his camp before galloping off. It was the head of his brother, Hasdrubal. A greatly outnumbered Hannibal was forced to return to Italy where he was finally defeated at the Battle of Zama in 202 BCE, bringing the Second Punic War to an end. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any other suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover, please leave a comment below. And we'll see you next time on History Junkie.